Welcome back. Well, yes, as you've seen there, we've got Chief Dilo Mamoudou joining us next as the Director of Strategic Communications for the PDP's PCC. Good morning, sir. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Well, yes, it's, uh, it's not exactly the morning after, but... Uh, it feels like the morning after, right? It feels like after, that, right? you know, but, yeah, he's gotten the certificate of return and your party's been speaking loudly about what they think uh, transpired, uh, but um, let's get your impression of what you think of the whole process. Last Saturday was another sad day for our country. It was a day Nigerians were supposed to get it right. I mean, there had been so much drama, melodrama, promises upon promises. Beavers will be a game changer. But what we witnessed was a charade. And now, I'm becoming paranoid about elections in Nigeria, and I'm also becoming superstitious about the years that end with three. One of our worst elections took place in 1983. In 1993, we had our best election. It was killed. Now, in 2023, in fact, we're much worse than we were in 1983, a year you could call an analog era. So with all the billions, if not trillions, wasted on this election, we might as well have told Nigerians, APC is not ready to go, so we don't need an election. We're turning Nigeria into a one-party state. And then I'm sure in our usual docility, we would agree. But to waste all that money, waste people's time, the young people, I pity the young people the most, they came out, they had faith, they had hope in their country, and they came out, and you dashed that hope. Instead of a renewed hope, you dashed their hopes again. So for us, the election was a complete waste of resources. And we tried our best to make it perfect, <laughs> that even if you are going to rig, there is a method to madness. If we're going to rig, at least follow the process. Follow the process. And then everybody can go back home. Follow and the process of rigging? Yeah, no, the process <laughs> what that you it? the process that yeah. you laid down for yourself. You they, they made the laws. The political parties did not make the law. They made the laws. So what we are saying is that you promised us that we will be able to transmit. I voted in Lagos, for example. We knew. All our agents, at least one thing you must say about PDP, is that we had agents in virtually every polling unit in Nigeria. And I'm sure some of the other parties also had their agents. Mm. But what came back to us, under my own directorate, strategic communications, we had a liaison office. And we were able to instantly get results as they were happening. Okay. But what... INEC has declared, and then where were they hurrying to? Hurrying to Golgotha. Where were they rushing to? All they needed to do when the major political parties started complaining was to apply the brakes, listen to them. The man just took a few comments and said, I've decided to go ahead. Wait till I complete. It's like going, it's like telling a doctor, I am dying, I'm feeling some pains. This is your surgery. Something is going wrong. And instead of the doctor saying, oh, okay, let's see if we can get other opinions. Let's see what we can do. He said, no, wait until you die. And after you die, then we will investigate what went wrong. No. You don't do that anywhere in the world. Now Nigeria is bad, is back in the bad news. I'm Everywhere just, I, I, globally. I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, Chief, I'm wondering how it is that we're going to be assessing this. Um, are, are you trying to say that your party won these elections? My dear sister, there was no question about that. And I will tell you why. It took a lot of effort for Chief Bola Tinubu to be defeated in Lagos. It took a lot of effort. We all knew that 
but he was defeated. Wait. Just wait. a moment. No, just no, a moment, this, sir. This politics I, I, I will, is a game of you. mathematics. I know, but uh -huh. I, the point I'm trying to make is that he was defeated, and it was not by the PDP. Uh, can I tell you something? That's why you will know I'm being objective. The defeat, let me tell you, this thing is a game of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And those who plotted everything that happened, they were poor mathematicians because they left some telltale evidences. Telltale, very obvious. Now, in Lagos, what was recorded for Labour Party was much higher than what happened. You see, there was this space inside the Electoral Act that made it possible. All you have to do, they did it in Osho State, all you have to do is where Labour Party or PDP is having high votes, come there and say there is overvoting. There is, they, these are artful dodgers. Just say there are overvoting here and there, and then it will be cancelled. So they cancelled, they did it in Sokoto, they did it in Imo, they did it in Rivers. No, just a moment, it. sir. Uh, uh, the question I asked you was whether you think that it's the not PDP about, it, it's won not the about elections. losing. That's no, what just I, a moment. Yes. You, you pointed out the example of Lagos, and I said that, yes, indeed, the APC was defeated. You said it took a lot no, of defeat. Just defeat. a moment. You said it took a lot of defeat in Ubu in Lagos. But I, the point I'm trying to make was that it was not by the PDP. And that even in the places where the uh, APC lost, um, in many places, it was not, the surprising thing was that they were not defeated by the PDP. It was Labour Party which swept those states. Uh, so I am just wondering, on what basis is the PDP making its own complaint? Okay. I will go back to Lagos. All they had to do, you see, when you want to steal, when I say you are an artful dodger, when you want to steal, you create this impression of neutrality, of, oh, it's a credible election. So you deliberately, what happened in Lagos was to make sure they left Lagos, but they knew it was overwhelming. There is a theory in elections that you cannot rig where you are overpowered. So what will happen is, what is the margin of the results? That's what happened in Lagos. In Oshun State, you said PDP did not, PDP in Oshun State won. won. But even at that, the margin was still manipulated. But they could not do it because the people, don't forget that Governor Ademola Adeleke is fresh is loved to beat by his people. So it would have been very difficult. There would be, I mean, probably too many lives would have been wasted. So they avoided there, but still made sure that the margin was small. Then when you go up north, when you go up north, that is where you had the most desperate governors who had bullied their own president, bullied abused, took him to court. Hmm. So they were under pressure. Okay. They said they had no elders in the north. So they were under pressure to deliver to their principal. And the final one, when you see a president of a country come out after voting against the laws of the land and you show who you voted for, for me, that was a subliminal hmm. message. Okay to some people, to some so, state actors, and so, that's what happened. So, Chief, looking at uh, Yaga's report, uh, they call it the 2023 presidential elections are once again a missed opportunity. INEC must be fundamentally reformed. So in that piece, uh, the part where they speak about findings on results, now it says, based on reports from 97%, that is, 1,453 of 1,507 of compiled polling units. Yaga's Africa statistical analysis shows that the APC should receive between 34.4% and 37.4% of that of the vote. 
uh, Labour Party should receive between 24.2% and 28.4% of the votes. The NMPP should receive between 4.6% and 6.7% of the votes. The PDP should, re should receive between 28.3% and 31.1% of the votes. So that went on. Now, from your analysis, because many of these results fell within that range that was announced by the Commission, does the PDP have contrary figures to the percentages that were released? I am not the chairman of INEC. Those figures, I believe, would be released at the appropriate time. What I know is that from our own statistics, since you are using statistics right now, PDP did extremely well across Nigeria. In Osho State, we were able to take on the APC power. That is the ancestral home of Chibola Tinubu. We were able to do that. In Oyo State, we fought hard. In Nikiti State, we fought across Southwest. If you go to the South South, you will meet PDP. If you go to the Southeast, you will. In the Northeast, so how you will know something was fundamentally wrong was that when the results were coming out, because we were compiling, we were doing our own collation, we realized that Atiku Abubaka was leading in the Northeast, was leading in the Northwest. Those are the places where you will normally have the largest votes. But what did we see? Once the results are coming from the INEC direction, everything fell apart. And this is the crux of the matter. In Sokoto, I was speaking to our governor and our, the director of our campaign, the DG of our campaign, Governor Aminu Tambua. It was a tug of war. Wherever you found the APC governance, it was a tug of war. In Imo, in Eboni. And we alerted INEC that they are changing things. People were carrying guns mm. to intimidate people. No, but, okay. In, in but, Kogi, mm. we saw what happened to Natasha. Sorry to button chief. Yes. But, you know, before the elections, we pointed out some things that many thought that the PDP should actually address before they go into the elections. Now, we've seen the result that came through from Rivers. Uh, they, many, still wondering if the, if the PDP had handled that, well, maybe it might have tilted the votes. And of course, everybody knows too about the primaries. If they have pulled ranks, and gotten other parties to close ranks, maybe we may not be talking about this now. So with the benefit of hindsight, do you think PDP should have done some things differently? No. In Rivers, we all know about the temper and temperament of God Wiki and what he's capable of doing, and which he did openly. It's all, all over the social media. Yeah, but I'm talking, no. I, I think my colleague is also referring, I think we can add this to it, is the fact that the presidential candidate of the Labour Party was a key member of the PDP. Yeah. And it would seem that your party was swimming against the tide with the presidential candidate that he fielded for these elections. The South East, which used to be the bread and butter of the PDP in terms of how their votes usually turn out for the PDP, even sitting governors couldn't retain their seats or couldn't get their seats for Senate. They lost it to the Labour Party. Doesn't it say something about what happened with this election? No, we've had similar elections in the past, 1979, 1983, when Chief Obafemi contested from the Southwest, just like Tinubu has done now. Chief Azikiwe contested from the Southeast, just like Ubi has done now. Alagi Shewuchagari contested from the Northwest. And, of course, we had Amino Kano in Kano. The only reverse now is that Atiku is northeast and northwest. It's the same thing. Look, whenever two southerners face a mainstream northern candidate, it is almost virtually impossible. Yeah, no, that, but you underestimate, uh, no, no, just a moment, yes. you underestimate that in the time of Awolowo, there was no north-south alliance. What they had was a southwest-southeast alliance. There was no north-south alliance, and it was seen that they under, and it was seen that that's the lesson of the APC. No. That's the lesson that the APC learned in terms of the merger between the ACN and the CPC. 
So it, it will seem that the PDP underestimated that and also the, the north-south sentiment in terms of where the part where, you know, the president should come from. Let me repeat what I told you the last time I was here. Let's not live under this fantasy that suddenly Nigeria has changed to the extent that people no longer vote along ethnic lines, no longer vote along religious lines. What transpired last Saturday was that the major factor was ethnic. In Lagos, the reason why Labour Party was able to take on the APC behemoth was because of the preponderance of the Igbo people in Lagos. They but, are everywhere. You could but, see that. But you just spoke about young people. And yes. for a number of people, they think that young people really made... I mean, I think a lot of young people will feel very bad that you say that this is about ethnic sentiment. The people who voted and the, who campaigned the, for... The platform, the... there must be a foundation to every building. Where we are, there is a foundation holding this building. The foundation was that Obi started from the east. He had his base intact. Atiku had his base intact in the northeast, in the northwest. The only person who could not hold his base was Balatinubu. And now you are telling me that a man who could not hold his base suddenly is the champion in the north. I'm sorry. All I, right, let's I, go to I, I won't our colleagues in Lagos. Go ahead, please. Well, thanks, Chamberlain. Uh, Chief, just uh, to also shed light on this issue, uh, we saw your party, the Labour Party, hold joint press conferences. Even the vice presidential candidates also spoke, it was seem, with one voice, uh, asking that uh, the whole process be stopped, um, even uh, given a vote of no confidence on INEC and all of that. And uh, for a lot of people now, even though the APC has said that the reason why your party lost or the Labour Party lost is because uh, it was a divided house. But really, who then really can Nigerians, uh, will I say, believe that you have a claim to winning the election? The Labour Party says, we just had Colonel uh, Abara say, he believes with the figures they have that they won convincingly. You also said that well, with the figures you have, you won convincingly. And when we look across board, the states in, in the South, for example, were shared between Labour Party and the PD before the ones that flipped, for example, uh, we saw uh, Lagos, even Imo, an APC state, was won by Labour Party. In the North as well, Nasarawa Plateau, your party taking Katsina, Kebi, even uh, Sokoto naturally. So really, who should Nigerians, would I say, pay attention to that has the legitimate claim to winning between Labour Party and your party? Our priority here should be to talk about the process. A faulty process cannot give birth to a perfect process. The foundation was very bad. The Electoral Act was not followed. It was not obeyed. So whatever results you get out of it, whosoever won last Saturday cannot lay claim to legitimacy. That's what we are saying. I'm not here to trade and bandy words about who won, who did not win. We are saying a process. That process gave birth to the hulabalu that we have right now. What I'm telling you is that until we go back to that process and give people a semblance of hope that your vote would count after being counted, then there is no hope in the electoral process. Nobody is fighting that someone was declared winner. What we are saying is that under what basis were you able to bring all these results? Where did they come from? It looks like abracadabra. Where did the results come from? So show us where the results came from. We stopped you while you were counting. We said some things are fundamentally wrong. Can you please address it before you continue? Just like somebody who is a victim of hypnotism. They just continued. That is the basis of this. I know my principal, Atiku Abubakar. 
if they followed the process, it will never, he, he is a consummate politician, he is a consummate Democrat. I've met him a couple of times since this thing happened. He has remained his cool, calm, and well comported self. What we are saying is that if we do not address the issue of the process now, saying there was a winner is a very terrible thing. You can't. Chief, All Chief. right, Chief, I know you've seen that video making the rounds about your earlier prediction uh, that uh, uh, Senator Bola Tinubu, it will be difficult for people to beat him because he's built bridges, he's made alliances, and that was way earlier. And now people say that that is what has just played out. Uh, it's very easy to bring out videos and cut the parts that suits your purpose. <laughs> but did they show you where I said that PDP would have to field someone more formidable than Tinubu, and that person is Atiku Abubakar. There is no question about that. So for the next elections coming through now, is your party encouraging supporters to also go out there and get their voices heard and make a point this time? Oh, we are responsible citizens of Nigeria. We will always obey the rule of law. We would encourage our supporters to go out and vote, and vote again overwhelmingly, and hope hopefully they will be able to defend their votes. We saw what happened in Lagos where people came out and they couldn't vote till late in the day the security people were just looking at them all right all right uh we have to end at this point uh, chief dele momodu is the director of strategic communications of pdp's presidential campaign council thank you for coming on and all the best sir. thank you for inviting me all right we will be back in just a moment do stay with us